So welcome back. Uh, this video is about the boogeyman. So the boogeyman are two toys which are uh, in this version quite ugly. <laughs> uh, we will replace the, the 3D model later. Uh, for example with the one uh, we made for uh, Scared Steve because it's the same, uh, <coughs> the same 3D models and textures. But right now, let's interface this one to, to Visual Pinman. So, um, <coughs> we will need to create what we call a toy inside the script for, the, for these two. So, uh, there was no toy into, into Dr. Jude. So, let's open the script from Attack From Us, for example. So you have the script, you have the runtime compilation related uh, things uh, section. Yeah, and then under, just underneath that you have toy related classes. So we will uh, copy the comments right now and uh, before the table manager, just to divide things up. Actually in the United Pinball Beta 2, there will be an option to compile uh, multiple uh, scripts, but right now it's we we need to do it in the same uh, in the same file. So uh, let's divide things correctly. Oh, I closed it by mistake. Right, and we will just analyze what are the toys classes and. Uh, how we can implement one for uh, for the boogeyman just putting things up to clarify things so okay so we will create a class in here <coughs> and we will link to the 3d object so how are toys made actually toys can be really whatever you want Okay, so it's just a class and uh, you will have to learn some of the uh, Unity uh, code and the Unity API to, to create it. But we have some things to help you to do it. So uh, this is the uh, Adams, uh, sorry, the Attack from Mass uh, Motorbank code because it was kind of a toy. And this one was uh, a mech, so a mech is uh, the equivalent of the mech inside um, inside Visual Pinball. There, are so you also have the possibility to uh, inherit from uh, our API um, solenoids, for example, or uh, our API is Mona Behavior Script. Or you can you can uh, do it just by deriving the base mono behavior of Unity API. API. So according to the documentation, the boogeyman are uh, an assembly driven by a solenoid. So it is. Uh, I will find it that way. So let's find the assembly. So this is it. The boogeymen are up there and uh, there is a solenoid. When it's triggered, one is up and mechanically the second one is down. And when it's, when it's off, uh, it's the opposite. <coughs> Just by mechanics behavior. And um, so uh, it's driven by a solenoid. So it seems obvious to inherit from baked solenoid. Uh, in this way, uh, we will be able to to we, it, it will avoid us to take care about the sounds mechanism. So because big solenoid base uh, base class handle this for us. So we will just do all right kind of this thing. So let's do it. Okay. So we will create a class. It will be called uh, L 
Vera. Let's call it Boogeyman. All right. And let's just copy the name. Design it to be applied to the main boogeyman. I will explain it later. Okay, so what does we have to do? Uh, we can override the solenoid base. So uh, let's copy it. So this function is is called when the the, the behavior is started by unity so we have to override the one from base solenoid and don't forget to uh, to use base dot start it will call the base solenoid uh, start function this is important it uh, will set up the sound and so on and uh, we will also need the second function uh, actually the saucer was really more complicated than what we want to do because we don't need physics in here and we will have to um, the, the best thing is to inherit from the set state so in the in the bake solenoid function there is a, a, a function called uh, I will check it uh, in the in the United Pinball oh sorry about in the United Pinball uh, website to the documentation of the behaviors just to be sure about the top of the, how the name is uh, is set up the name of the function so let's go to the behaviors doc and let's go to BX solenoid. Okay. And so we have this function which we can override too because we near it from it. And this is set state. Actually, it's not done like this into attack from Mars. I think there is a solenoid callback. Um, now, you know, this will be the, the easiest things to do, right? I will tell you why later. So in the start function, let's create a callback, right? So we need to find the, the base table manager and there is a singleton. Uh, for the for the table manager because we we are not inside the class inherited for for uh, from uh, table manager so we had a solenoid callback the solenoid callback is function takes two parameters into a into account it takes first uh, let's just check it also into the behaviors doc so the x ppm table manager or table manager and go to add solenoid callback and it takes the slot uh, from which it will be uh, it will be triggered and the slot state callback so a slot state callback is the name of a function and the function should have to take an int and a boolean so let's cut it uh, 
remove the set state, it's not what we want. We will create a new function called, um, for example, boogeyman solenoid callback, which will take an, a slot as an input and the boolean as a state. Right. Okay. And uh, let's copy this name of this function and put it into the solenoid callback function. Also, we have to check that the um, what what is the solenoid val number. And if we go into the documentation. It is here the boogie monster, boogie monsters, and the boogie monsters are uh, 14, 14 because the 16 is for is a flasher, so it's 14. All right, so this is set up, and um, Right now, we will just launch the game and test with a debug function. So uh, there is a function for you. It's called utils dot debug. Oh, up 3 d debug. It takes the type of error we want to print, and we will print an error for it to be displayed inside the the. Um, the debug uh, uh, console. Uh, it takes the, the string, so let's uh, write the string. So boogeyman. Actually, it's boogie monsters. But let's call it boogeyman. Boogie monster solenoid. State. And let's add. Okay. So first also let's check that this slot is equal to 14. If not, it's not the, the right callback. It shouldn't happen, but never mind. So let's return here. Okay, and what is missing? Oh, okay. Right. And now we also need to add the boogeyman, this class. We had to add it to an object. And we will do it. Uh, how, when, when is it done for uh, attack from us? I don't remember that. I uh, think it's above or just after init arrays. Okay, so it's after the DMD object. Okay. So that's um, the toys initialization function. As there was no toys in Dr. Jill, these lines were not there. We will use the unity function to find our, our object and our object is uh, the name of the toy so let's say, let's say that this is the main toy it's called toy4 right. and we want to add a component to this toy which will be the, just the class we, we created and it's Elvira table manager So, uh, this is good, and let's see if the, our callback is, is called. So I will launch the table using this script, and let's see if we can draw something inside the, the, the console. I pause for you. Sorry about that, I just figured out that I was, that was the wrong name of the class I, I just it's not Elvira table manager, but it's Elvira boogeyman.
This is the auto compression, sometimes making mistakes. I launch again. Okay, another mistake. It was that the function, there is one argument missing on the function of the debug. It is right in here. The third parameter is um, the priority, so it's the highest priority there. It's one, and I start again. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, here is the development console. Uh, it's enabled when development build is open, and there should be uh, the the message we we wanted to debug when the the solenoid 14 will be triggered. And the sort of, uh, we will start a game to trigger this. So we have to hit all the jam functions to enable the boogeyman and send the ball there. So right now it should be triggering. Okay, it's working great. So we have our function and the callback is working when it's set on and off. So now let's just code this function. So we go back to this uh, to this function, and we will um, we will change the so we will change this uh, behavior. We will modify the transform, but I uh, forgot to mention that uh, toys are not imported very well, especially in the position. So we have to use the the table explorer to to manually move uh, the boogeyman to their initial position and this will be down uh, in a few okay so if I move closer to the boogeyman as you can see uh, when importing directly there are quite a little bit too too much higher so we will open the table explorer then select it and using this gizmo object we will move it down to the to the initial position and the second one too. Okay. So let's say it's correct right now. This one is a bit offset. Okay. Remember to save the modified transform and we can quit right now when we will launch the table again. This boogeyman will be there. So, and by the way, if you look inside the, the, the directory, there is a new modified truffles.xml. If you open it, you have the modification that we just made for the toys, toy 5 and toy 4. So let's go back to the script and what we want to do is to um, alter the, the transform position uh, by script. So to do that, um, first let's define some, uh, some member, va member variable and uh, it will be a, well, we don't need to, to set it public. It will be a boolean to say if the main is up, which means that uh, flag to tell if the main boogeyman is up and the second down or reverse, okay. And um, let's say that we will create a utility function which will uh, set an object. So uh, set position. It will take a game object. A game object is a main object from Unity. 
it would take a main object and it will take um, a boolean to set to tell if it's up or not. Right. So actually, we will use it to set up um, the default position and to move it. So the goal is to 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 get the transform to modify it and to reset it. So um, let's start. So we will take the main object and we will get the transform for it. So uh, this transform has different um, values and we are interested in the local position. Okay. And this is a vector free um, that we will call pause. We get it, we will modify it, so let's say that uh, we will take uh, plus equal, let's define some constant value in here to be customizable, it's of an offset and let's say it's 15 millimeters so Let's add it, add a rough set, but we want to add it only if it's um, if we want to set it up to set it up. So um, let's do it from um, I will write it in a more clean manner. So, if it, we want to set it up, let's just modify both dot y plus equal. Uh, we said offset and. not we want to uh, offset in the opposite direct direction and uh, so we have to initialize it uh, for the main to be up and let's say that the main is up by default so we will call set position and with the set position we will have so uh, every behavior uh, has a f um, base uh, from the base class mono behavior as a variable called game object with mine with a lowercase g and this is the a, po uh, a pointer to the game object uh, on which the, the, the behavior is applied and we applied it on toy 4 here so if I call it like that toy4 it will it will be toy4 in game object and I want it to be up and as we set by default both down we don't have to do it for the second one so this should set up our first toy just when we initialize it and we will need also a pointer to game object of the second one so second uh, second toy initialize it to null oh sorry to null and this is uh, point to the second booby man all right so uh, let's just find it and initialize it so we have to initialize second toy and second toy is uh, equal to we use the static function of game object just with like we did before that and it's toy I think it's toy 5 if 
I remember well. Second one is toy five, yes. Toy five. All right, and if everything is going correctly, I just can tell that when the solenoid is up, actually it means that B is on. I will just leave this and comment this line. Be sure. Okay, let's say that. Uh, so the main is up. We take the new value of the solenoid state, and we want it to. Uh, oh, actually, it will be the reverse of it. Okay. And so we want to call the set position here. So. If main is up, actually, it. If main is up, is different than the previous version. So if the new value is different than main is up, actually, it will be. We need to reverse it because the default value of the solenoid is off and when it's off main is up is true so we have to use equal in here and so this line means that the solenoid state has to actually because it was different and so right now we will have to um, to call set position of either game object or second toy so okay to prevent mistakes we will uh, draw some thing so let's open the assembly and take a capture okay so this is the default position and uh, so the first one is up and the second one is down and this is when solenoid 14 equal false. So this is the default position and it's one, the one that we just did. So this will be game object in our case. And this will be um, second toy. Okay, and it will be the opposite. Main second toy will be up and game object will be down when solenoid 14 will be true. All right. So as by default, the solenoid is off. We don't need any more main is up. And just need to use the B. The thing is that we don't use absolute position, but we modify position from the old position. So by the way, I forgot to uh, set it back. To the transform, to apply the transformation. That was really important. Otherwise, nothing would have worked. So if B, it means that uh, that the main boogeyman should be down and second up that's what we just told it here so 
let's do it and also it means that the other one was in the correct position so because these callbacks are called only when b is b state is switched so the the, the previous state was was the opposite of b so let's say that the we have to position game object down so it's uh, of uh, false and second has to be up so true and the opposite uh, so we can write it simply by say the minus b and b Okay, and let's try it right now. Okay, just a mistake on the spelling, spelling here. Let's try again. Okay, start again. Oh. hear the sound right now so uh, this closes this video uh, it was a bit messy but uh, in the end we get what we want so thank you for watching and see you on the next video